Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I recently put out a video about an emergency flight from LaGuardia Airport to JFK Airport aboard an Endeavour Air CRJ 900. That video was very well received by you, my audience, so I'm putting out another video today about another emergency that occurred in the New York City area. This time it was a JetBlue flight that took off from JFK bound for Atlanta and wound up flying right back to JFK again. I think you'll find this story very interesting. And what I do with these videos is that I provide information about the incident from an air traffic perspective. There are many other videos out there that you can watch for the flight tracks and simply listening into the air traffic control about what happened to the particular flight, but I take it a step further in these videos by analyzing what's going on from the perspective of the air traffic controller so that the aircraft that's in distress can safely return to the airport. I think you're gonna like this video. Before I get started, again, Again, I want to thank you all for all your wonderful feedback, and I've got many more flight videos coming up soon, including a flight to Europe, so stay tuned for that coming very, very shortly. For now, let's focus on this JetBlue flight out of JFK. Okay, let's get started. This flight will have the call sign of JetBlue 1219, an Airbus A320 operating off of runway 31 left at JFK. The initial departure fix for this flight is Robbinsville, and quite often aircraft that use runway through and left for departure have a departure fix towards the south, in this case Robbinsville specifically, but other fixes are often used off of this runway. So the aircraft will take off on runway 31 left and make a left-hand turn after takeoff. This is standard for all departures off of runway 31 left. The air traffic controller's goal is to get this aircraft to Robbinsville, and then they'll proceed on course to their destination. In this case, the destination is Atlanta. So we're going to start listening into the tapes when the aircraft contacts New York departure control off of runway 31 left after being asked to contact the departure controller from Kennedy Tower. This is going to be a standard operation. There's nothing unique about what's going on right now. The aircraft is simply taking off, turning left, and checking in with New York departure control. So let's listen into that right now. Departure JetBlue 1219 with your 1500, climbing 5000. JetBlue 1219, your departure rate of contact, climb and maintain 11000. Climb 11000, JetBlue 1219. So the controller immediately gives the aircraft clearance up to 11,000 feet and only 11,000 feet because above that aircraft at higher altitudes at 12,000 feet, there are other airplanes such as arrivals coming into JFK on different arrival procedures and approaches. So we can only climb the aircraft here to 11,000 feet. Now, one thing that is happening is the aircraft is making that left-hand turn to the south. That is actually not mentioned with ATC because it's part of the published departure procedure. So standard departure, this aircraft is basically following the Belt Parkway off of JFK and heading towards the Atlantic Ocean. Totally normal right now. I'm going to fast forward this tape to about a minute or so into the flight where the air traffic controller gives the pilot the next clearance. Let's listen into this. Jeff, 1219, contact departure 124.75. 2475, Jeff, 1219. Very, very simple transition. The pilot is being asked to contact a second departure controller. The first controller really didn't have much to say to this pilot, and it's the second departure controller that's going to start getting this aircraft ready to fly to its initial departure fix of Robbinsville. The second departure controller is also located in the same facility as the first departure controller, the New York Tracon, which is an air traffic control approach control facility located in Nassau County on Long Island. Let's listen in as the pilot checks in with the second departure controller. JetBlue 1219 with your 7,000, climb in 1-1,000. JetBlue 1219, your departure, Roger. Okay, again, really not a lot to be said there. The air traffic controller just comes back with the word Roger, and the aircraft just continues its climb to 11,000 feet. So we're heading towards the south, and eventually the aircraft is going to be told to proceed directly to Robbinsville. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit more to approximately a minute and 30 seconds or so after that transmission where the next transmission occurs. Let's listen into this. This one is going to be interesting. Right. Jeff with 1219, uh, 17,000 direct Robbinsville. 1219, uh, emergency aircraft, uh, need direct to uh, JFK. Yeah, we're going to see everything okay? Uh, we got an engine problem. We're going to uh, go direct to uh, JFK. Left turn. Yeah, we're going to see Roger. Left turn. You're subject to JFK. Be right back to see direct Kennedy. Left turn, direct uh, Kennedy. JetBlue 2019. 
Okay, I'll pause that there. So the aircraft was told to proceed directly to Robbinsville, which is the expected next transmission. However, as soon as that transmission was given to the aircraft, the aircraft said that he's got a problem. He needs to return to JFK. And the pilot himself actually said that he wanted a left-hand turn to JFK. Now, in my opinion, the air traffic controller would probably also issue that aircraft a left-hand turn to JFK because JFK would be quicker to get to if you make a left-hand turn as opposed to a right-hand turn. Right-hand turn would put you more into Newark's airspace uh, over New Jersey, and the left-hand turn immediately brings you towards the traffic pattern to Kennedy Airport, which is landing on runway 22 left and 22 right today. So this is a very, very quick decision. We've got a problem with the engine. The aircraft needs to get back to JFK as quickly as possible, and the best way to do that is to make a left-hand turn. Let's listen in to the next transmission. Jibba 1219, fighting a 130. That's just for your sequence. 130. Jibba 1219, do you need any additional services at the airport? Jibba 1219, the Kenny 3014, and do you need any additional services at the airport? So the pilot was told to make a left-hand turn to 130 degrees, which basically sets them up to fly a... a towards the left downwind leg to runway 22 left, which is fine because that will get the aircraft uh, set up between other arrivals as quickly as possible. And the controller also had a couple of questions for the JetBlue pilot. The pilot did actually not respond. You can imagine that there's a lot going on in the cockpit right now, and the pilot may not necessarily be focusing on the air traffic controller. They're just trying to resolve this engine issue that they're having right now, which makes total sense. Now, it could be a, a little bit concerning for the air traffic controller when a pilot says they've got a problem, they don't respond, but trust me, everything will be well, uh, as you probably already know if you've researched this story already, but the aircraft pilots are very, very busy right now. So I'm going to fast forward it to just a little bit further down, just a few more seconds into the tape. Let's listen into this. Jibba 1219. 1219, go. Jibba 1219, do you need any additional services at the airport? Uh, negative uh, for now, but uh, I'll let you know, 1219. Okay, Roger, thank you. The Kennedy Altimeter 3014, contact the departure on 135.9-er. 35.9, Jibble, 1219. Okay, so the pilot said that he did not need any additional services as of now, and the air traffic controller is getting him right off of his frequency to another frequency, Kennedy Departure Control, which is actually the frequency that the pilot was on previously. Uh, this particular air traffic controller is going to continue helping this aircraft make this left-hand turn. This is out over the Atlantic Ocean towards the downwind leg to the runway 22s. We don't know just yet if the aircraft's going to land on runway 22 left or 22 right, but it's kind of irrelevant at this point. We just want to get this aircraft set up for the approach. Runway 22 left or 22 right will be the best runway to land on due to the current wind conditions at JFK. So let's check in with this next controller. And uh, uh, JetBlue 1219, uh, this is with an engine out, out of 11 requesting lower and uh, heading back to the uh, airport. 1219, Roger, fly heading of 070, descend to maintain 6000. 070, 6000, Jibble 1219. Okay, so 070 degree heading again, another left-hand turn to prepare the aircraft to get to the downwind leg and then descend and maintain 6,000. So the pilot wants lower. Even though this is the departure controller, this aircraft is in the airspace of other flights that are departing JFK. So we want to keep this aircraft uh, in relationship with the other aircraft on the same frequency. So this air traffic controller is talking to departures out of JFK, such as this flight. 1877 radar contact, turn left, direct ship. Direct ship, Delta 1877. So that's an aircraft that just took off from JFK. He was being told to turn left to direct ship, which is an airspace fix out over the Atlantic Ocean. That's kind of the area where this JetBlue flight is right now. So everyone's on the same frequency, making sure that there are no conflicts. Of course, the JetBlue flight has priority over other flights. Let's listen into the next transmission that occurs here with JetBlue. JetBlue 1219, uh, do you want ILS 22 left or 22 right? So there's the question, 22 left or 22 right? Uh, we can do 22 right, JetBlue 1219. JetBlue 1219, Roger, and when you get a chance, I need fuel remaining in pounds and tolls on board. Just a sec, 1219. Okay. 
Is it left or right engine? It's uh, left engine, Jebel 1219. But, um, yeah, the right engine. So that's an important question that the air traffic controller always asks a pilot with an emergency, how much fuel is on board and how many souls are on board. In other words, how many people are on board the aircraft. And we've just confirmed that the issue is with the left engine. And of course, there are other pilots on the frequency. So let's listen into that for a moment. Departure Delta 42 Heavy, 1.2, climbing 5. Delta 42 Heavy, near Forest Rider contact, turn left heading 060. Delta 42 Heavy, vector 070. Correction, correction 060. Stay firm. So notice that that aircraft is climbing to 5,000 feet, which is the initial altitude that's assigned to aircraft when they take off. The air traffic controller did not tell this aircraft to climb any higher because JetBlue, coming in around the vicinity of this aircraft, is descending now to 6,000 feet, so there'll be 1,000 feet of separation between the aircraft. So one is a departure, one is arrival, they'll be separated by 1,000 feet, and they're going in opposite directions. Good work by the air traffic controller there. Here's the next transmission with JetBlue. And our JetBlue 1219, uh, 1.8 souls on board, and we have uh, 17,000 pounds of fuel. JetBlue 1219, Roger, and it's going to be an ILS 22 right. ILS 22 right. Uh, thank you, JetBlue 1219. Sorry, fuel was 17,000? 17, 1, 7,000, JetBlue 1219. So at this point, we know how many people are on board the aircraft, and we know how much fuel is remaining. Let's fast forward a bit to the next transmission. Jeffrey 1219, terminal heading 040, descend and maintain 4000. 040, 4000, Jeffrey 1219. Okay, so the 040 degree heading is northeast, and that's in the opposite direction of landing on runway 22 right, which heads to the southwest. This is officially the downwind leg. What the air traffic controller is doing is putting the aircraft in position to land, but also taking into consideration other aircraft that may be in the vicinity that are also landing on runway 22 left or 22 right, because they're all going to be on this downwind leg, and they're going to make a left-hand turn. There are aircraft that are coming from multiple directions to JFK. Some aircraft come from Europe and they generally fly around the Long Island area from Suffolk County into Nassau County, proceed down towards the Atlantic Ocean, then back north again and make a left-hand turn to runway 22 left or 22 right. Other aircraft come in from the west or the north. They fly very high over Manhattan, then descend rapidly via a left-hand turn over the Atlantic Ocean, and then join this downwind leg where JetBlue is to make the left-hand turn to land on runway 22 left or 22 right. In addition to that, there's another flow of aircraft for arrivals that are coming from the south, and they're basically flying over the Atlantic Ocean straight up towards JFK. They'll join the downwind leg, then make a left-hand turn to runway 22 left or 22 right. Let's listen into the next transmission here to JetBlue. Jibble 1219, contact approach 125.7. 25.7, Jibble 1219. Okay, so the air traffic controller is now officially handing this aircraft over to the approach controller. And the approach controller is handling all those arrivals that I just spoke about coming from those three primary directions. So all of a sudden we've got an aircraft that we did not know was going to land that needs to be fit in between all of those arrivals coming from all these different directions that are being vectored onto the downwind leg to runway 22 left or runway 22 right at this point. Let's listen in as JetBlue checks in with New York approach control. Approach Ojibwe 1219, uh, 7,500, so descending 4,000. Ojibwe 1219, roger. Ojibwe 1219, just make heading 060, please. Heading 060, Ojibwe 1219. So this air traffic controller is handling aircraft from all these different directions, from the west, from the east, from the south, and this 60 degree heading puts the aircraft in a good position to fit among all the other airplanes that are coming in on this downwind leg to runway 22 left or runway 22 right. All the aircraft need to get to this position, and of course, this aircraft does have priority over the other aircraft that are on the frequency. Let's listen into the next transmission, which occurs not too shortly after what we just heard. Jibble 1219, turn back to left heading 040. 040, Jibble 1219. Okay, the 040 degree heading, again, is a slight turn to the left. This just puts the aircraft in the appropriate position on the downwind leg. This 40 degree heading is actually the complete opposite direction that the aircraft will be landing in. This aircraft is currently heading northeast, and the landing runway, runway 22 left or 22 right, heads to the southwest. Let's listen into the next transmission, which occurs shortly after that one. 
Jeff Blue 1219, descend maintain 3000. 3000, Jeff Blue 1219. So the aircraft is being told to go down to 3000 feet, a lower altitude, and this is the appropriate altitude for aircraft that are in this position. This aircraft is no longer over the Atlantic Ocean, it's over Nassau County, heading to the north, and 3000 feet gets the aircraft lower as the air traffic controller prepares to set up this aircraft to intercept the final approach course. Let's listen into the next transmission. Jeff 1219, turn left, sitting 360, speed to discretion. 360, free speed, Jeff 1219. Okay, so a 360 degree heading is a continuation of the left hand turn as the aircraft gets closer to the final approach course, and the controller said that the pilot can proceed at his own discretion with regards to speed. Let's listen into the next transmission, which comes shortly after that one. Jeff 1219, if you want to do a visual approach to 228, let me know. The only traffic you have is landing the parallel. It's company A320 out there, off your 9 o'clock, about 3 miles at 2000. If you can give us the outlet, that will be better. Jeff uh, told my team. See you guys. So he doesn't want to do a visual, he wants to do the ILS. Then comes this transmission. Jeff 1219, descend maintain 2000. Descend maintain 2000, Jeff 1219. Okay, 2,000 feet is obviously a low altitude. We are very, very close to lining up with the final approach course to runway 22 left. And, uh, Jeff, we're 1219. Uh, we'd we'll, uh, like to taxi off the runway, and we'd like to have someone to uh, check out the engine before we taxi onto the gate. Okay, I'll let them know right now. Thank you. So that's some proactive information to be passed along to the control tower by the approach controller. Jeff, we're 1219, turn left, heading 280. 280, Jeff, we're 1219. The left turn to 280 degrees is considered part of the left base leg to the runway, and we're getting closer to lining up with the runway. Jeff 1219, Tower Nose, and Jeff 1219, you can continue your left turn heading 260. You're five miles from Matter, 2000 until established. Third island, runway 2 to right approach. 260, 2000 to establish, good for now. Let's do the right approach, Jeff 1219. Okay, the pilot's clear for the approach to runway 22 right, and the controller let the pilot know that the tower knows about the information that the pilot requested just moments ago. Here's the last and final transmission on the New York approach control frequency. Jeff 1219 tower is 11901. 91, thank you for the help, Jeff 1219. So it's only been about 13 minutes or so since the aircraft took off, and the aircraft is now back on the control tower frequency to get landing clearance to land on runway 22 right. Let's listen in as the pilot checks in with Kennedy Tower. Tower Jibble 1219, uh, joining uh, allies to the right. 1219, Kennedy Tower, wing 1904, on the 22 right, please go in. 22 right, clear land, Jibble 1219. Okay, he's clear to land on 22 right, but listen to this transmission to another pilot. 1965 The tower told another aircraft to line up and wait on runway 22 right. The tower is going to squeeze out a departure, a Delta aircraft, before this subject aircraft, the Jet Blue plane, lands on runway 22 right. Kennedy Airport is a busy airport, but there's plenty of room for this aircraft to get out. Now, on another frequency, Kennedy Ground Control, there are conversations between the controller who's handling ground control as well as vehicles on the runway in preparation for this aircraft to land. Let's listen into that in the meantime on a different frequency. Attention all emergency equipment, subject aircraft is number one from a 2 to right on a seven mile final. Right to one pass. Well, Connor 99 is going to be holding short around with 2 to right, box truck. Bon I nine Roger, we're gonna wait till the aircraft lands and rolls out. You can hold short of two to right and remain this frequency. So you can hear that the ground controller is talking to vehicles on the ground that have already worked their way out onto the taxiway system in preparation for the arrival of this aircraft. The controller specifically let those vehicles know how far out the JetBlue flight is. That's really good information. This is extremely well coordinated. Now, of course, we've got that aircraft in position on runway 22 right. Well, the tower is about to issue that aircraft takeoff clearance. Let's listen into the transmission to Delta. Delta 1955, wind 1803, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 22 right, Delta 1955. Okay, so that Delta aircraft is now clear for takeoff on runway 22 right. So as soon as that aircraft rolls down the runway and takes off, the runway will be completely clear for JetBlue to land. And as we know, there are these emergency vehicles that are standing by on the side of the runway in case the aircraft has any issues. Let's listen in again to the ground control frequency where these transmissions to the vehicles are occurring. 
emergency equipment. Just want to confirm subject aircraft is number one for runway 22 right on a two mile final. Okay, so the aircraft is number one for runway 22 right and will be landing momentarily. Now, the tower controller can see this aircraft out the window also on the radar screen, but the tower controller is also working other aircraft on the frequency too. Kennedy Airport is busy. Let's just take a moment to listen into some other transmissions that are occurring. New York Tower, good morning on Chile 532, I left to runway to the left. Delta 1955, contact New York 4. Good morning, Delta 1955. Uh, 1955. Land to the 532, heavy change, tower wind 108 at 4, runway 22 left, switch to land. Yeah, so that's the left, 1955. Triple 2117, continue Bravo, short of factory golf. Factory giveaway to your company at factory golf, monitor 1219. Triple 2117, we'll hold short, we'll do it. So as you can see, runway 22 left is being used for arrivals at the same time. It's quite a distance from runway 22 right, so we can have aircraft landing on that runway while our subject aircraft is landing. And that Delta aircraft that took off was also told to contact the departure controller in the New York Tracon. I'm going to fast forward this a bit to the next transmission. Let's listen to this. 1219, the next available right, your discretion. Taxi Kilo, short of Kilo 4. Kilo 3, Kilo short of Kilo 4, Jet Blue 1219. What does that mean? Well, Jet Blue 1219 has landed, and the air traffic controller in the tower has told the aircraft which taxiways to take. This was a successful landing. Here's the next transmission on this frequency. Thanks for the help, guys. Great job. Thanks for the help. Great job. All of the air traffic controllers from the approach control facility to Kennedy Tower did a fantastic job coordinating everything that needed to be done in order to get this aircraft back to the runway as expeditiously as possible with vehicles waiting on the side of the runway just in case. Now, remember that ground control frequency, there's still transmissions occurring on ground control now that the aircraft has landed. Let's listen into that. You call 99, you can hold sort of 2 2 right at Foxtrot and monitor 1191. So that vehicle is just being told to listen into the control tower frequency where our subject aircraft is on. And here's the next transmission on the tower frequency. It was 12, 19, taxi kilo, short of kilo four. We advise the emergency response vehicles if you would like the engine uh, checked out. They are en route. Monitor 12165. 2165 and uh, short of uh, kilo four, just blue 12, 19. Okay, well, that aircraft is being told to switch to the ground control frequency and listen in to ground control. Everything is going to be totally fine. I'm going to let you listen in to all the transmissions now on the ground control frequency that are occurring. Rescue one and company, you can go to 121.65. The subject aircraft requests an inspection of his engine, and it's the uh, left engine from what I understand. Okay, so there's another frequency, 121.65, and as you can hear, the controller let the vehicles on the ground know that the aircraft is requesting an inspection of the left engine. Roger, Kenny, Rescue One Company is holding short of 31 left at Yankee, requesting permission to pull off. Rescue One and Company, Roger, you can cross runway 31 left at away Yankee. Roger, we'll be switching. Kennedy Ground, Truck 2. Truck 2, Kennedy Ground. Truck 2, order short Kilo, cost 31 left, and company. Truck 2 and company, you can cross the way through and left at Kilo. Truck 2 and company, crossing 31 left at Kilo. Kennedy. That last call for Kennedy Ground is unreadable. Kennedy Ground, 598, hold the short Kilo. Clear 31 left. Truck 2 and company, Roger, understand you clear 31 left. Trust one and company just want to confirm you clear three one left. So as you can hear, there are a lot of vehicles on the ground that are surrounding this aircraft. They're going to do an inspection of the aircraft itself. Eventually, this aircraft is deemed that it's totally fine to taxi and then just continues on and works its way to its gate. Now, since the aircraft is on the ground, these transmissions are a little bit difficult to hear. So I'm going to let you do the interpretation. This occurred on the ground control frequency. Yeah, it's up to, uh, yeah, number one engine sounded like... Uh... Sounded like maybe uh, pretty good uh, damage. Um, yeah, engine relit light, but I don't know. Uh, not sure what it looks like. Okay, yeah, 
we're not showing. Uh, we had an engine over temp. Uh, it now is not over temp, but uh, we had one uh, pretty high uh, in flight. So the pilot is giving information about the engines. It sounds like an engine over temperature, but obviously everything was successful and the aircraft made it to the ground. Here's another transmission. Okay, I heard him say, sounds good. We'll coordinate taxiing back to the gate. Thanks for your help. This aircraft is stopped and it's all ready to go to the gate so the passengers can deplane at the gate itself rather than use air stairs or any other means to get off the aircraft. Nobody's in danger. Obviously, there's no injuries. Listen, this was a very stressful situation, but I just want to emphasize how safe everything was. Everything was beautifully orchestrated, and although I can't comment too much on the avionics of an aircraft, I know that there is an additional engine on this aircraft that was operating perfectly fine, and all aircraft can operate with just one engine, even though they have two. But the air traffic controllers did a great job ensuring that this aircraft got back to the airport as quickly as possible. As a matter of fact, as soon as the pilot declared that there's a problem, he immediately told the departure controller that he wants a left-hand turn to go back to JFK. Everything worked out absolutely perfectly. Passengers, of course, on this flight did not immediately get to their destination of Atlanta. I'm assuming that they were rebooked on later flights to get to their destination, but this is what had to be done. Obviously, you don't want to continue a flight all the way down to Atlanta with one engine experiencing difficulties. And the aircraft pilot chose to go back to JFK rather than any other airports, probably because JFK was the closest airport. And it also happens to be that JetBlue maintains a base at JFK. So all the technicians that are employed by JetBlue or work on JetBlue aircraft can do all the maintenance of this aircraft right there at Kennedy Airport without having to send this aircraft to a different location or fly in maintenance people. Everything just worked out just totally fine. And I'm very happy about the actions of the pilot and the crew for this particular flight. What a story. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this particular video. It's not very often that I do these talking head videos to the camera because I fly very, very often. And I wanna share all of my interesting experiences with you as I focus on how flights fit into the national airspace system. If you like this video and you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button below and hit the bell button, hit the like button so that you don't miss out the next time I post another video. And to help support this channel, you can always offer some super thanks. Just below the video on the right hand side of the screen, there are three dots. If you click on those three dots, you'll see a button that says thanks, and you can show your support for this channel by making a donation. All the money that comes in from your donations goes right back in to support this channel so I can bring you some great content. All right, everybody, I think I've done enough talking for the day. I'll be back very, very soon with another in-flight video. So I'll see you in the sky.